Hello, today I'm going to show you a tutorial on how to create Google Forms for your direct sales business. I utilize Google Forms in two different, well actually three different ways currently. The first one is through personal order forms so that my customers that do not choose to order on my website and feel more comfortable just sending me their order certainly can with ease. The second way is for my Hostess of the Month club members to utilize my club participant profile which is a Google form I've created for them to complete when they join the club. And the third way is for them, whenever they've attended one of my parties or my shows, whether it be in home or online, for them to fill out a survey form to tell me and give me feedback on how well they enjoyed their show or ways they think that I need to improve. So I'm going to go ahead and get started and show you just two of the forms that I have pulled up so that you're able to see what they actually look like. So this is my personal order form. And again, this is an order form that I would send to customers that are attending a, a online show, for starters, that want to be able to utilize me to give them quality customer service in place of actually just going on my website to order. Or especially if they're placing an order and they live near the hostess and they would like to save on shipping and have the order shipped for free to the hostess's location, this is another great way for them to utilize that order form rather than to go online where of course it would give them that shipping charge. So on here you'll see some of the things that I ask them is to please tell me who the party is for, like which hostess they actually attended. And if they don't, then they simply write in A, their first and last name, their shipping address, their email, their phone number, their actual order itself. And this one, of course, if they put in, um, let's say, the love warmer, and then they click, and it'll continue to grow the list the further down they go. So that one, they can enter, obviously, several sections. Their preferred shipping method, they do have the option of economy shipping or standard, or again, to ship to the hostess. Then ways that I can further help them and provide quality customer service to them so they can click the things that apply. So they can tell me, do they want to join in January for only $49? Would they like to host their own Cincy show? Are they interested in trying out some scents that they've never tried before? Or even perhaps some of our laundry care items, items that perhaps they've never seen in person, I can send them samples of. Are they interested in participating in my Hostess of the Month Club? Or if they just want me to follow up with this order only and do not need any further assistance at this time. Their preferred payment method, they can pay with me through PayPal, through credit card, or through an invoice sent for ProPay. And then of course, just my little logo that I like to use um, that tells them thank you for letting me provide them with quality customer service. The second form that I utilize is my club participant profile. And again, this is for my customers who choose to be part of my Hostess of the Month Club. And in here, again, you're going to see some of the same information, name, email address, phone number, their birthday month, because I do send them a little surprise for their birthday, and their commitment to purchasing the $35 per month for that club membership, and then they just submit as well. So to get started with either one of these types or similar, you're going to go to Google Forms and you can simply Google Google Forms or you can go to google.com slash forms and you're going to want to make sure you are logged into Google ahead of time and then simply click the go to Google Forms. Now on here you'll see some of the other forms that I have previously created and I do have more than one account. This one has most of my business forms that I utilize and then I have a separate one from when I still was a teacher on a regular basis and I have all of my educational uh, forms that I utilize in the classroom on that one. So here we want to start typically with a form that's already created. Why reinvent the wheel if you don't have to? So I usually will use one that's already here and that's where I got the design for the personal order form and for pre-order forms. And that's a great way if you have items that you know are going to possibly sell out with your customers that you want to do a pre-order form and your direct sales company allows it. Um, and with us, they do for Sensi and with a few of the other companies I'm with, that's a great way to use as well. And then, of course, that's how I created my club ah. participant profiles. So you'll see I have one for my Matilda Jane business, one for my Tastefully Simple, as well as one for my Scentsy business. Um, and then my embroidery uh, sales company I, I order um, from and, and actually place orders and complete orders for customers, I have one for them also. So we're going to utilize one that's already pre-done. Pre 
And I'll start with the contact information. That one is probably the easiest. So here you'll see a couple of icons across the top, and I'll talk just a little bit about what each one of those does, as well as the ones here on the little mini control board, is what I like to call it. This is going to be your new best friend when you're working with Google Docs. So on here, I want to change the name. Instead of contact information, I'm gonna change this to customer order form. So you simply click it, and then you're going to type in what you would like it to say. I'm happy with it at the top of my list, and then here it says form description. I'm gonna ask them to please complete this form for me to place their order. Now, I could have left that blank, but I chose to put something there. So then, of course, their name I'm happy with, but I want to make sure that I do have this as a required item. Now, if it has the little red asterisk, it is required, but let's just say it was not already required if I was completing this with a blank slate instead of utilizing a template. When I go to click on the box, several things pop up. I have the option of changing what I want here. So let's say I don't want it to just say name. I want it to say first and last name. I can add a short description, but I don't want one, but let's just say I did. I would click the three little dots here, click description, and now you'll see there's a new line, and that's the way I can add this little tiny text here, but I don't need that right now for this particular one, so I'm gonna take it back off. But on the side here, I can change what type of answer I want them to provide me. Do I want a short answer? Do I wish to have a paragraph? Do I wanna give them multiple choice options? Do I wanna give them a checkbox, a drop down, and then some other little things here as well. I'm gonna leave it at short answer because most people's names can fit in here the spot. And I can duplicate this and create an additional one. I can delete it. I can make it required or I can not. So if I didn't wanna make this required, I would simply slide it over and you'll see now that little red asterisk that was here is, is gone. But I wanna make that required on this form, so I'm gonna turn it back on. And now you'll see the asterisk is back. The next slide, uh, the next little uh, field here is I would like their email address. Now I don't like mine to just say email, I want it to actually say email address. And again, I want that would be required. Everything else here is already set, I'm okay with, nothing further, so I'm gonna go down here. The next field is address. Now this, I wanna make sure they know that I need them to give me all of their address. So I'm gonna simply state, please be sure to include your, um, your house number, street name, city, state, and zip code, okay? And then that'll simply show up as well. Again, I wanna put that one on paragraph and leave it there, that way they have a much larger field to type in. I do want the address to be required. The next part is phone number. Now, the phone number, I'm not going to require it because the majority of the folks that I am gonna utilize this form with, typically I have other means of ways to contact them. They're either local or I can find them on Facebook because they're on my friends list or I can email them, so I'm not gonna quite require that. Then the next one is our comments. Now, for this particular form, this is a customer order form. So I'm going to change this and list this as the items that I need them to order. Which items would you care to order? And I'm gonna leave it on paragraph so that they're able to give me a very long list if they need be. And I'm gonna make that required, because again, this is an order form. Now, the next one I want is gonna ask them their preferred shipping method. So I need to add in a new box, because as you can see, there's nothing else down here. So I'm gonna click the plus sign, that pops up a new box. And I'm gonna simply ask, preferred shipping method. And I like the little radial dial circles for the multiple choice, so my first one is going to be economy shipping, the $6. My second one is gonna be, oh, sorry, standard shipping, at $8, and my last option is going to be local pickup from Hostess. 
okay? And again, I want this to be a required field. Now, let's say I made a mistake and I wanted to go back and change something. I would simply click the delete and that would just delete this one line. Or I can go in and delete the entire box by pressing delete. Let's just say these particular items, I want it to include graphics as well. Um, I have a, an adorable little APO address graphic that I like to use sometimes with shipping to remind folks that I, I, we do ship to APO. I can always click the uh, add image button here and add a picture that will go with that particular line. So then the next one I would add in is preferred payment. And if they're local, you can also add cash or check. I am going to simply put PayPal for this one and credit card for this one as the demonstration. And that's really all you have to do there. Now you could go in if you wanted to and give them check boxes, which typically the difference with check boxes is with check boxes you can check all or none if this was the live, whereas with the circles is typically only one option. And that's kind of the difference there. So I'm gonna go back to multiple, all right? And then at this point, I wanna make sure I have everything. So I have their first and last name, I have their email, I have their address, I have their phone number, the items they want to order, their preferred shipping method, and their preferred payment method. Now, I'm gonna stop on the demonstration portion for this one, but if you go back and look at my personal order form that I actually utilize, I do have this additional section that you want to try to encourage them to give you additional information about ways that you can service them. If you were at a home party, these are things that you would ask during checkout. These are things that would possibly be on your company's order form. So you wanna make sure that you are in fact utilizing those so that you're still able to give them the same quality service as if they were attending a home party. So you can also go in and you can add an image. And here you would just upload it from here. So let's just say I wanted to add the image. Let's find one. Um, we'll utilize the logo for right now. So I click choose. It's gonna upload the Scentsy logo for me. And it's a pretty good size logo. So you'll notice here that it's kind of off-centered. So if I wanna center it, I go to these little three dots on the left and center a line. If by chance I decide I don't wanna use that image after all and I need to change it, I simply click the three dots again. I can change or I can simply remove it altogether. I want to leave it for right now for the sake of the demo, but I do want to take a look and see if there's any other options I can do. So I can simply here say thank you for choosing me. I can leave it blank. I can go here and I can also list the hover text, which is great because I can tell them, um, please feel free to see all of our products at my website at https colon slash slash marcieva.cincy.us. That's one way. And then every time they scroll on this picture, it hovers and it pops it up. Now, it won't show it to you here on the non-live one because this isn't live. This is the demo. Um, just my demo, so I don't have it on the actual form itself. But if you go back to my original form I showed you, this one is live. And if you hover it, you'll see it says, feel free to order on my website. And it gives you my website name and address. So going back to this one. So now that I have that, I do have the option of adding videos as well. And to add a video, you would simply click the little play icon and I can either search YouTube or I can go to the URL and I can actually type the direct URL there and then hit um, the select button and it'll save it. But I'm not gonna add one right now, so I'm gonna leave it here. And so that's pretty much it for the form itself. Now, for some of your settings. Now, you'll notice it has this green background here. I can go up and press the color palette and I can change the color. I can go up and I can add an image. And if I add the image, it gives you a lot of great themes already. So for instance, this one's really cool with the bubbles. Um, oh, I love the book and the paintbrushes. Those are all really cool and the color pencils. So let's just say I wanna go back to, hmm, let's do the bubbles. So I click the bubbles and click select. And now you see it gives an entire theme. So not only did it place the bubbles at the top, it also changed the coloring at the bottom. So that's one option. 
then of course I can just leave it at a regular color. So let's just do it that one. So now I have the teal color again. If I wanna see what this looks like live with actual customers, what they would see, I would click the preview. And this is my actual live document, what someone would see if they came to the link and they decided they wanted to go in and place an order. You'll notice this particular one, I forgot to go in and put the requirement that they have to require to fill that out. So I do need to fix that. Phone number you see I didn't and the rest I did. So now we're just gonna close this one out, go back here. I'm just gonna scroll right down to the preferred method. I wanna click it and I need to make that one required and now it's required. You'll see the little red asterisk again. So now we're good to go. They should all be required. We're just gonna double check, scroll down except for the phone number, and now you'll see the asterisk there. So everything kind of updates in real time. Um, so it's very simple to make those changes as you need to. That way, just in case you had a typo or you forgot to add something, you can go in and add it. Here you'll see I have settings, and if I click the settings, it gives me a few. One of them is to collect their email address, but I don't really need it here to collect that because I've already asked for it on the form itself. I do want to limit them to one response, and they do have to sign them to Google in order to fill out this form. And the reason I select that is it helps cut down on the amount of spam and order forms that people will fill out and play around with just to joke around. If it's tied to their Google account, they're a little less likely to do that. And then of course they can edit it after they submit it. I do wanna allow them to do that that way just in case they accidentally had a typo themselves. Um, they can go back in and fix it and before they, they send it. And then of course I wanna save that. And then here, which is the most important part probably, you'll see send. So when I click send, I have a couple of options. I can send this link to someone via email or I can send it just the link and I usually will use the shorten URL and that would just be what I would copy and paste. And that is what I would post on my Facebook page. That's what I would post on um, any correspondence to someone who has a question about how to fill this out. That's what I would post for them to be able to go to this document. And then of course, if I was embedding this into a blog or some other web page, I could use the HTML coding. I can also make this where it'll share to Google Plus, to Facebook, and to Twitter. And I just want to make, make you aware here where you shorten the URL, for instance, you'll see the last three digits here is 7i1, and I'm going to copy that and post it. Well, let's say I come out of this screen and decide that I, I don't want to utilize the form right this minute, and then I need to come back in here later. It automatically saves it, so now my contact form is up here but that URL code will change when you come back in. Do not be alarmed, that's just what it does. They both will still work. So just in case perhaps you had given the first link to one or two people and now the second link you're gonna have to post somewhere else, they will all still route to you and you won't have any issues there. So you'll see it has a new code, the end of the code is different, but it'll still work the same. And then you're gonna come out of that one um, also note here, you'll see your responses. If you had responses, they would pop up here. In the event that let's just say you're not taking orders currently or you're on vacation and you don't want people to fill out the form and then it's just sitting, you can turn your responses off by pressing that and it says not accepting responses. And you can here customize the message that is routed to them as an autoresponder to tell you whether or not um, to tell them, I'm sorry, whether or not you are no longer accepting at all, whether or not you'll be back next week, or whether or not, you know, you'll follow up with them um, in the new year because you're on vacation, whatever response you'd like to be there will go here. Now, once you have responses, it will import them to a spreadsheet through Excel. Um, was well, it's, it's not technically Excel, it's the Google version of Excel. Um, and so it will give you the spreadsheet there. And then if you click the three dots, you can post your get um, email notification for new responses. You can select where you want them to go. You can download this, um, the CSV file, and you can also delete all of them. So like if they're all spam and people are just playing around, you can just hit delete and it deletes them all out at once. We're gonna turn that back on. And then the last thing is here, you can make a copy of a file. You can move it to trash. You can get the pre-filled link. You can print it you can add other collaborators. So let's just say you are utilizing this for your entire team 
for, uh, for instance, let's say you're using a form because you're having some sort of training or meeting and you want your entire team to be able to come in and add things to the form or you want them to be able to take a look at it, you can add collaborators. Um, you can make a copy and that's the one I probably use the most because I do utilize this for more than one company. I'm able to take one that I've already preloaded make a copy of it, and then just change out the actual company information. So change out the word Scentsy or Matilda Jane or Tastely Simple or, or wherever I need to use it. And I don't have to completely redo all of the fields all over again. Um, so it's definitely a time saver. And of course, if you go back to that main screen when you first log in, you'll see these are part of the templates up here, and these are all the ones that I personally have created in this particular account. So if you go to the template gallery, you'll see you have things that you can use personally, um, party invites, t-shirt signups, RSVPs, work-related ones, job applications, order forms. This is where you want to go in and create your surveys if you're doing a customer survey for your customers. Um, and then these are the educational ones, and I have used these quite a bit, like I said, in the classroom over the years. You can create mini quizzes for your students to do, very quick and easy. Um, and the great thing about this is it is accessible from cell phones. So if you have customers that have a really hard time maneuvering the websites on their phones, you can create this quick, easy Google link for them to be able to have them send the order to you. Um, and so it's a wonderful way to just keep things really simple for most of your customers. Um, so I do hope that this tutorial was helpful for you. If you have any questions at all, feel free to send me a message um, in the comment section of the video or on Facebook, or feel free to visit me on any one of my business websites. Um, again, you can find me for Scentsy at Wax Delights. For Matilda Jane, you can find me as well. Um, for any of the companies I rep, you can find me just by Googling my name. My name is really rather unique. So you can find me for any of those. Um, and again, I look forward to seeing your creations that you utilize with Google Forms. And again, if you have any trouble, let me know. Thanks so much. Have a great evening.